work together 16-2 on page 485 in your textbook. It says the statement of stockholders equity has two major sections, capital stock and retained earning. Information for this equity statement is taken from more than one source. It says the amounts for the capital stock section are obtained from which source? Check all that apply. It comes from the general ledger. The amounts for retained earnings are obtained from the adjusted trial balance, so we get our beginning number, and then from the income statement, so we know what net income or loss is. And just FYI, on capital stock, that's where I get the beginning balance as well as any stock that got issued during the period. And then which of the following will increase retained earnings? That decreases, that doesn't affect your retained earnings, that increases, doesn't affect, doesn't affect, that decreases. So that is it for that section. And then we're going to actually prepare the statement of equity. And I'm just going to go down to... Oops, this part. So I have balances. So 82.5 for capital stock, 15, 283.40 is the beginning balance of retained earnings. And then dividends, we apparently had $12,000 of dividends. And then on the income statement, at the bottom, we have our net income of 73. So those are numbers I'll use. So here's some additional information to prepare. We issued, as of January 1st, 8,000 shares with par value 10. We then, during the year, did 250 more shares. There are several blank cells in the first column that require section headings, amounts, etc. And no colons are needed. So, here we are. We are Superior Corporation. This is a statement of, holy cow, of stockholders' equity, and it is for year ended December 31, to zero dash dash. That's for 2020. Our first, because we have two column headings, so I'm going to kind of do it how my brain works here. Capital stock. And retained earnings are our two sections. And we start with the par value, which it told us right up here was $10. And we start with the beginning balance, January 1st. Apparently that's where I'm putting, sorry, comma, 20, whatever. And then the shares issued, they told us there were 8,000 right here. And 8,000 times $10 per share is $80,000. And then during the year, they told us we issued 250. And 250 shares at $10 par value is $2,500. So then our balance at the end of the year apparently I keep doing that. So we now have 8,250 shares which is just adding these two together and then we add that and we have 82,500 and we can verify that by taking $10 times the number of shares issued equals the total value of those shares. So then next we do the retained earnings section. And again, we're going January 1st, 20 whatever. Net income after tax. Oops, sorry, I didn't put the balance in there. Um, from up above again, what was on the 
trial balance up here, the adjusted trial balance, retained earnings at 15,283.40. 15, 283.40. And then net income after tax from the income statement, we had 73. 148.80, that's the very bottom of the income statement. And then we will subtract dividends. And it was 12,000 up there on the trial balance, 12,000. And that is still a net increase because we had a plus here, a minus there. So it's a net increase of 61,148.80. I add that increase to the beginning balance to get my balance at December 31 of 76,432.20. And then my total stockholders' equity at December 31, 20 dash. I take capital stock plus my retained earnings, and together those are 158,932.20. And then do not forget that these three numbers then are the numbers that I'm going to use on the balance sheet. So for capital stock, 82.5, for retained earnings, 76.432.20, and my total stockholders' equity. These have to be what I use on the balance sheet.